Oh, hi. This week I had very poor timing and I'm touching up my hair color before I go get my booster shot. You just kind of have to deal with it looking like this so I can record this bit and get the video out to you in time. Holidays are hectic. <sighs> if you can't tell, I've been feeling better physically. Emotionally is a question mark some days, but tis the season, is it not? <laughs> Anyways, the project we're doing is a flannel up cycle, which is my favorite thing in the world. Half of the work I did was just making it to a more reasonable size for me. But if you can find any kind of button up shirt, really, that like has a little bit of give, not, not one of those like fitted blouses. Feels like blouse should have a different plural. But yeah, I have this dress that I thrifted ages and ages ago and I really, really like it. And then I realized the reason it's flattering is because it has this whole section of shirring. It's not just a couple rows. It has like 10 rows of shirring from the underbust to the waist. All right, as for how I turned this oversized flannel into this fun fitted, I think very flattering shape. Now oh, I don't have my coffee, hold please. Here's what you need. Some type of top. I was very excited that this one is nice and long on me. It is so rare to find a button up sleeve that is actually long enough. So I tend to have to go up in sizes to get it to actually be a reasonable length on me. Also on the topic of the flannel, just could it be more perfect colors for me? I, I have no words. It's just jewel tones galore. These are my happy colors. I know I'm from New England. So this is a stance I would take really hard anyway, but well, flannel is the best material in the world. It's just the softest, coziest, still lightweight material. I love it so hard. So once I had my flannel picked out, I also got some vaguely matching thread. It's hard when there's a bunch of colors going on like this. So I just picked a gray for most of it. And that seemed to blend in well enough, both on the serger and the regular sewing machine. And yeah, the typical like scissors pins. I use safety pins and I also use some chalk, but use what you got. You know how it goes here. So I tried the shirt on and then decided where my waist was and where that was gonna get cinched in. I pretty much decided between these two blue sections of the plaid. That way it wasn't interfering with the sleeves and it gave the bottom a little leeway to flare out like an A-line skirt. Kind of just pinched at the sides and put a safety pin right there and made sure the fit seemed okay on both sides. Now this is an alteration I do a lot at my part-time job. Well, one of my part-time jobs. And I always thought taking stuff in was a lot more complicated than this, but it's like pinch it in, measure how far in that mark is, flip it inside out and then take it in that much. I do it every single day. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, I want the skirt to flare out. So I'm not gonna take the whole side of this shirt in. I'm gonna take the bodice in that much down to about where that second blue chunk of plaid is. Then start to taper out the bottom of the shirt till it gets to the original hem. Also, this saves me from having to redo the hem. I'm doing the same thing on the sleeves. I'm gonna take it in those like four or five inches, bring it up the arm, make sure there's plenty of wiggle room going on when I tried it on. And then same thing, kind of taper it so that when it met the cuff, I didn't have to fuck around with any of those seams either. It just kind of met the edge of the original seam allowance and it just made everything much easier. And also the cuffs have two buttons. They're adjustable. I'm able to push them up a bit if I want to. So I didn't have to take those in at all. Obviously that's another set of alterations, which I suppose we can get into sometime if you're interested. It's a lot of work though. And I don't want to do it, but I do know how to do it. So yeah, here's my chalk line of how I have everything tapered out. I just tried to match it as well as I could to both sides. Then I did a small straight stitch along the chalk line. Did a little try on first to make sure it fit okay. Also, we're not messing around with darts or anything because the shirring underneath Underneath the bust is gonna give a little bit of a gathered effect above and below it. That's why I'm not doing any like fisheye darts or anything to fit the bodice like I did with this other flannel dress I did last year, I think. Then I hit both of those edges with the serger so that cut off all the excess here. Again, this is the softest material. So now that it's been washed a couple times, and then I'm gonna make myself some new reusable face wipes. I think I also have a video on how I did that. Okay, now it's already time for shirring. This is a much more simple upcycle than I even envisioned in my head. Where it's literally, okay, we're taking in the sides and then just shirring the waist. I thought there were gonna be a lot more steps to it. Not everything has to be difficult all the time she told herself unconvincingly. So to prepare for shirring, you just have a regular top thread. I again stuck with some gray, but you do need an elastic thread on your bobbin. I used some Gooderman brand. Obviously I took everything off of the spool, but I've also used just some basic no name. I don't even know where this one came from. This is the number I've used the most and I've never had to make any adjustments on my machine. It just does its thing. I don't have to tweak any tensions. I haven't had any issues with it. Perhaps if you have the same kind of machine as I do, I use a Husqvarna Viking. Fingers crossed it also works okay for you and it's not a giant headache because I don't know how to help you fix it. <laughs> but yeah, the only thing about doing elastic bobbins is that you have to hand wind it yourself. Now I thought you had to add some tension and stuff to it, but don't tug on it at all. Wrap it around without pulling on it at all and just keep it 
nice and even because the machine's gonna do the tugging for you. If you do it differently, please let's talk about it in the comments because I'm curious what other people's experience is with it. Okay, fixed it. Other than having to hand wind the bobbin for the elastic thread, you just gotta set your machine to the longest possible straight stitch and you're ready to go. I didn't even switch to a walking foot or anything. I just had a normal, actually it's like a wide toe foot. I do wish I had done a narrower one because I did do each row of the shirring using the edge of the foot as a guide and I do wish they were like a little bit closer together but I didn't realize that till like halfway through when I wasn't going to redo all of it. Though speaking of redoing the shirring, my bobbin ran out partway through one of the rows and because you have to backstitch at each end like really really make sure that elastic is hunkered down at the edge of each row. I didn't want like this knot of overlapping elastic in the middle of the shirt wherever. So this partial one that started in the bobbin ran out, I just unpicked it and started over again. The upside of doing plaid is there's a bunch of lines ready to follow. So that made it nice and easy. And I didn't want the placket scrunched up. So I just started and ended at the edge of each side of the placket because I still wanted the shirt to like button up normally. I did about nine rows, three eighths of an inch apart, somewhere between like quarter inch and half inch. I do wish I had done right at quarter of an inch, which would have happened if I had a regular width sewing foot on. It still does the job, you know? Oh, and a little self-care tip when you're winding that first bobbin, go right ahead and just wind a couple more until your spool runs out. That's why these are empty. I had two of them and I just hand wound them all while feeling those big holiday sads and couldn't actually properly sew the other day. It was just something to kind of zone out and just let my brain wander somewhere else. And because I was doing so many rows, I did end up needing more than one bobbin. So I just got to refill it without any further interruptions. And once I was done stitching them all, it's ready to go now but I wanted to give it like the scrunchiest possible potential. So I did lay it out on my ironing board and I got my iron out. I did forget to fill it with water because I was trying to steam it, but there was no liquid with which to turn to steam. So once I filled that, I laid it out and I didn't press the iron to the shirt. I had it just above it and it's like magic watching it like shrink up a little bit. Very, very satisfying. And can I tell you, I know there's probably plenty of fabrics I have complained about not liking the feel of, but something about shirred cotton like this. Oh, it's just like scrunchy and pillowy and just great. I love touching this when it's not on me and like stretched out at all, when it's all squishy and fun. I don't know. I just really enjoy when there's a lot of rows of the elastic thread underneath. <laughs> okay. And then it was time for the grand reveal. I started buttoning it up. And once I got to the waist section, as you can see, was very excited. The only thing is there was some gapping between the buttons, which happens on every button up shirt that's ever existed, I think. So I did add some snaps between the buttons. I did put one side on the wrong way, but then I went back and I took the time to fix it. And then the final, final, final try on just made me so happy. I think this is such a flattering fit. And I'm just very into how this looks. I've already worn this at least once in its final form, but I did wear the original shirt a couple times to really figure out like what I wanted it to be. And yeah, that's how I upcycled this flannel shirt that I'm absolutely smitten with. I have to go run to get my booster, but very quickly, I wouldn't be able to do projects like this without everyone over on Patreon, both because I get to take the time and I can afford to go buy supplies like the flannel shirt, like the elastic thread and experiment with stuff because of y'all. So thank you so much. I know it's the holiday season and it's a little hectic and overwhelming and I just want to say thank you and I appreciate you so much and this is the greatest gift I have ever been given is being able to do this work. Cheers! I got one more video before the end of the year and we'll do a little recap of the projects I've done this year as well as how my no-buy year two went. Clearly not a perfect track record considering I just bought this flannel shirt last week but you know practice makes progress not perfection. Mm -hmm. I will see you all back here with that video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out flannel just feels like home, you know?